Hi, good evening, everybody. It's nice to have you all here with us. My name is Carrie Sparling, and I am CWD's uh, editorial director, and I'm very proud to be helping out with tonight's screenside chat. So tonight's chat is called, and I hope you already knew this before you logged in because this is what you've registered for, why everyone on insulin should have a glucagon prescription. So I'm gonna be kicking this over to the team at Zeris, but I'll be here throughout the chat. So for folks listening at home, if you have questions, please put them into the chat box or you can put them through the Q&A feature and we'll be monitoring those throughout and answering everything that comes through. So please make sure that you're asking your questions. We're very glad that you're here. But for now, I'm going to kick this over to Layla Van Samays, who is the Director of Marketing at Zeris Pharmaceuticals. Over to you, Layla. Great, thank you so much, Carrie. I'm so excited for tonight's program. Thank you so much for all uh, for joining us. Um, as Carrie said, my name's Layla. I'm with Zeros Pharmaceuticals, and we're the makers of Givo Hypopen, which is a glucagon auto injector. So we have a great program lined up for you today. This will hopefully provide you with great insights. It will inspire you to talk to your doctor about taking charge of your diabetes in a whole new way. So whether it's for you, whether it's for your child or your partner, we can all learn something from the stories that will, will be shared today. And I would like to introduce our three guests yes. for today and give a little bit of background on everybody. And then we'll go around the Zoom campfire and each one will tell their stories about their experience with severe low blood sugar and how they handled it. These stories, are so important. I know I was enlightened by them and I know you will be too. So first, I would like to introduce Charlie Iacono. He currently serves as the Vice President of Industry Relations and Commercial Partnerships at T1D Exchange. He's been living with type one diabetes for 36 years and he approaches managing his diabetes in the same way he approaches his professional career through data, real world evidence and collaboration to make the best healthcare decisions and care plan for him and his family. We also have Paloma Guerrero. She's a lifestyle influencer at glitterglucose.com and on social media, who's been living with type one diabetes for eight years. Through her blog, her social channels, she shares all aspects of her life and how she navigates um, living with diabetes. So whether it's fashion, beauty, dating, fitness, Paloma brings you along for the ride. Um, <laughs> and the goal is to make diabetes a little bit brighter. So last, we have Kenny Rodenheiser, who's very close to children with diabetes. And he was diagnosed um, in 2003 with type 1 diabetes. So through involvement in many diabetes organizations, he's realized his passion is to help people to learn about their disease and how to cope with it. He's earned his Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Ramapo College of New Jersey, and he became a certified diabetes educator, sorry, certified diabetes care and education specialist in 2015, and currently works as a diabetes educator in Philadelphia. In his spare time, he enjoys physical activity and spending time with his growing family. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna let Charlie go first. So Charlie, let us know about your background and what happens that gives you perspective on ready to use glucagon and managing severe lows. Great, thanks so much, Layla. It's wonderful to be here with everyone uh, this evening. I'm Charlie Iacono. I live in Norfolk, Massachusetts, uh, here out on the East Coast in New England. And I'm actually a transplant from the little estate in the country called Rhode Island, so not too far from my home now. And as uh, Layla indicated, um, I've been living with type 1 diabetes for 36 years. I'm currently 41 years old. And first and foremost, I want to thank Zeros Pharmaceuticals for having me here today to share my story about glucagon and GVOC. So like many others out there, when I was diagnosed with T1D, my world changed forever. I was five years old. Suddenly, my parents had to think about everything I was putting into my body. And let's just be honest, how my body was actually working. I was diagnosed in the mid 80s before the internet and things were not really easy in the T1D space. We certainly didn't have the luxuries of the internet. Um, JDRF actually served as our Google. Uh, and so not having the internet, uh, it, it became really hard to learn what the community was doing. Uh, we were living in Southern Rhode Island. Um, and so I think so many of us take for granted the internet nowadays, but in the 80s, we didn't have it. And so we really, really relied on the patient community. 
And on top of that, um, compounded on not having the internet, we didn't have technology that, that exists today, such as CGMs and, and, and or insulin pumps. Uh, so it, needless to say, life with T1D was certainly different. I'm sure many of us are in the same boat or very similar boats, but over the years, my treatment has evolved with a series of aha moments. There are three specifically that stand out to me, and one that is actually one that carries that I carry on my shoulder each and every day, and I'll, I'll share that last one with you. It's my third and final aha moment. But I'll share those today with you because they're directly linked to the role of glucagon in my T1D management. So without further ado, here's the first. So it was the summer and I was eight years old. And needless to say, I was an active eight-year-old. I had played three baseball games that day, gone to the beach and went swimming in our backyard pool. And I started to feel a little bit off around six o'clock. So my mom, like every mom or dad, tested my blood sugar and it was already in the low thirties. Immediately that super mom instinct kicked in to high gear and she started treating the low. At that moment in time, we didn't have glucagon kits. And so she was bringing out the old tried and true methods of soda, orange juice, frosting, cupcakes, cookies. I mean, in normal circumstances, this would literally be a night of dreams for a young boy. But for me, I knew something was seriously wrong. But nothing, no matter what my mom was bringing out to me that day at the, uh, at the picnic table was putting it. So we quickly went to the hospital. And fortunately, we were able to avoid a seizure. And I never actually passed out, but I remained dangerously low for quite some time. So the first aha moment is what I like to always say is a shared aha moment between myself and my parents. We realized that food alone wasn't going to do it for severe lows and glucagon is absolutely essential to have around the house. The glucagon prescription was filled shortly thereafter. The little red boxes were strategically placed all around in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the laundry room, my bedroom, I mean, they were everywhere, and I'm pretty sure they might have even been in the coat closet. Then when I went through high school and the rest of elementary school, and I never had to use glucagon. I was actually quite fortunate. I never had to go back to the hospital, another thing that I was really thankful and grateful for. And this was a pretty long lucky streak because I was an active kid. I played three sports, basketball, lacrosse, and uh, baseball, and I was a biz busy high schooler. But nonetheless, all things change with T1D. And the next epiphany actually came in college. And I had recently been diagnosed with celiac disease. And I was navigating that transition from pediatric care to becoming an adult patient. And learning to be an adult living with T1D is hard enough. Compounded with celiac disease, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I really started to realize the importance of advocating for my spells, myself, especially when I put on, was put on a low carb diet for celiac. But then my gastro doc and my endos and my primary docs never adjust the insulin carb ratios. They simply just cut out all the carbs and let insulin have a party. So I wasn't feeling all that well. My girlfriend at the time said, why don't you come down to my house in Providence? She was home for the weekend. And we decided just to hang out there and watch a movie. We did that and I ended up falling asleep. I actually had a severe hypo event in sleep where I went into a seizure and was there in a total disastrous situation but thankfully my girlfriend sp sprang into action. It took the rescue team when they got there about 20 minutes to actually revive me. They did not have a glucagon kit in the ambulance. So here we are, once again, back to the good old tried and true methods of sugar under the tongue, gel packets, trying to get juice down my throat while I'm lying on the floor. They actually got me to come out of the seizure. But again, it was 20 minutes after the full seizure but they were not able to fully revive me until they got me back to the ER and I was hooked up to an IV. So it was a very risky and a very dicey situation. So this is what I like to call my second aha. And it came with two realizations. One, I needed to start speaking up for myself and do my own research as it relates to my care. Two, I needed to refill those glucagon prescriptions. Make sure those around me knew how to actually use it. So shortly after the incident, glucagon boxes were everywhere again my friend's houses, in my car, at my girlfriend's. She even carried one in her purse as well as her lacrosse bag. I mean, everybody was armed to the teeth with glue gun, patiently waiting and hoping that that event never ever happened again. Three years went by and there were no severe lows. But here's my third and final aha moment around glue gun. Three years later, I'm in grad school. I'm a young adult who's still navigating how to best manage my T1D. 
My friends and I had gone out one night to celebrate a friend's birthday. Like most of us have done, we're really active during the day, we're eating, we're on the run, we're trying to do lots of different things. But on top of that, I was really into the gym at the time. It was actually going twice a day. I made a mistake where I did not consume as many carbs as usual and then didn't calculate my, my mealtime bolus the right way. And again, I wasn't on an insulin pump at this time. And so I was not only playing a very dangerous game of being a fast paced grad student, but I was also still managing how to figure out life with T1D and celiac. So I went out. I had a grand old time with my friends, went home and went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, I went downstairs to go to church with my parents. And my mom looked at me and asked, what's the matter? Are you okay? And there it is. I just passed out. I hit my head on the counter and went into another full seizure. She called 911, but she also had glucagon on hand, thank God, and was able to use it before the EMTs got there which actually brought me out of my seizure, but I still had to go to the hospital so they could monitor me because my blood sugar was still in the low 40s. That scary episode reaffirmed my past experiences that it is absolutely essential to have glucagon at all times, not just in the house, but also with me when I go places. Shortly thereafter, I also began immersing myself into the data that surrounds us in the D1D community because I knew there was a, I was not managed this disease and celiac without even better understanding and more information on how best to go about doing it and living my life. So I used to think that food and juice were easier because I could just throw them in a bag or carry them in my pocket or just you know kind of blend in. But I've learned through these three aha moments that food and juice alone might not bring me out of that severe low. Glucagon will though. With the introduction of new technology like GVOC, having glucagon on me at times is manageable. The GVOC pouch can fit in a jacket pocket. You can have it on you and not feel like you're lugging around something with you. Also, even though I haven't had to use it, I feel confident that I could use it on myself. And my wife, Katie, feels confident too. Even my boys, Peter and Thomas, do. GVOC HypoPen is two steps and comes ready to use. And quite honestly, that's doable in my mind when things aren't going the way they're supposed to be going. As with all prescription drugs, there are safety considerations that we all have to know about. If you wanna learn more about GVOC, talk to your healthcare provider. There's important safety information and full prescribing information in the link provided today. I also have some additional important safety information to share with you at the end of this story. You know, I've been very fortunate and my wife, Katie, always laughs at me. I mean, it's not just sometimes, it's on more on a regular basis, but I'm also a big believer in the idea that it's better to be over prepared than underprepared. I have a good friend who served in the Marine Corps, and he told me that they used to say, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. They carried, as we all know, these enormous packs on their backs for their missions, and just in case they needed something, they wanted those items. But most of the time, they didn't use everything. That has always stuck with me. So now I bring GVOC on hikes, to the golf course, to the pool, most importantly on road trips. I even carry it in my briefcase, and I have it in my desk here tonight because it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So 18 plus years after that final aha moment, which is crazy because it doesn't seem like 18 years ago, I haven't experienced any severe hypo events that have induced seizures or required the use of glucagon. I'm very lucky, but I understand the essential role of glucagon now better than ever. I have also become more of an advocate for myself. I'm much more knowledgeable in the T1D space. I actually work in this world too. I'm the vice president, like Layla said, at T1D Exchange. My life is literally all about T1D management and patient advocacy and patient research. And this use of real world evidence and the data to drive better outcomes for those living with TD, T1D will actually improve our community's chances of living better, longer, and healthier lives. I've mentioned these three moments that have led to me realizing the importance of glucagon. But I also wanted to mention that in addition to these signposts, I've also been fortunate my entire life to be surrounded by people who care about me and my journey with T1D. My parents, my wife, even my kids know what to do. It's really a community effort. And it's so important that you too find a network of people to help you along, to listen to your struggles and triumphs, and most importantly, to have your backs in those crucial moments. What we can do to help people that are around us is be prepared and be informed with the latest technology like GVOC. My boys, Thomas and Peter, are very much aware of my T1D. 
When my CGM beeps, they ask me if I need a glass of juice. With respect to glucagon, they actually know how to use it, and they know that they could use it to help me in a severe low. Of course, my wife, Katie, has also been instrumental. We give our loved ones the confidence by showing them to do what to do during the severe and most crucial moments. If you haven't talked to your friends and your family, you need to train them, and you need to talk to them now, because in that moment, you're going to want them to have your back. T1D is one of the most delicate diseases in, a, in the human, a human being can actually face. And I truly believe this. It's because we have to make so many decisions every hour, every minute of our lives. The problem is, is there is that one decision that can make or break your day and even your life. The only thing that we can do is be prepared, be educated, be engaged, and be confident that we know how to use the tools that we've been given. For caregivers and fellow patients, we don't get to beat T1D. It stays with you for the rest of your life until a cure is found one day. But you can beat it every single day. But the problem is, is we have to beat it the next day and the day after that and the day after that. It's kind of like Groundhog Day, although you don't have the same routine. Every day is different. So you always have to be on top of things all the time. And all, all of us make mistakes. That is one of the biggest things that I've learned in my journey with UND, those tools to correct those mistakes in the event that you need them. So GVOC equips you with those equips you for those unexpected lows. And it's really got your back in that sense. And I promise you, you won't notice carrying it. It is one of the most simple things you can carry in your purse or your briefcase or your jacket pocket. In today's world, you might feel completely lost if you leave your house without your cell phone. I mean, I know that I do, and it's probably more so because of my CGM, but I do know that I'm a bit addicted to those games that I love playing with my boys and also always having a camera at, at a snap uh, of a notice because you want to capture all those special moments. But the same feeling of being lost without your cell phone should apply to you not being with glucagon. T1D patients should feel like glucagon is literally their cell phone, their lifeline. You should feel lost without it. Talk to your doctor and visit gvokeglucagon.com to find out more information and begin to familiarize yourself with the world of glucagon. I do have some additional safety information to share with you this evening. The makers of Gvoke want you to make sure you have the most important safety information about Gvoke. You should not use it if you have a tumor in the gland on top of your kidneys called a phenochromosotoma or in your pancreas called the insulinoma or glucogonoma. This can cause severe high blood pressure, hypoglycemia, or serious skin rash. You should not use it if you're allergic to the active ingredient in GIVO, as serious allergic reactions can occur. Call your doctor, and most importantly, get medical help right away if you have a serious allergic reaction, including rash, difficulty breathing, or low blood pr pressure. You should use with caution if you have a condition that causes low glucose levels in your liver, including gluconoma, starvation, problems with your adrenal glands, or chronic low blood sugar. Side effects may include nausea, hypoglycemia, vomiting, headache, hyperglycemia, and inje injection site swelling, itching, and stomach and pain. It's been great sharing my story with you tonight. I look forward to having some questions and engaging in this uh, fireside chat tonight with all of you. And, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to chat with you all. Carly, it's so great, your passion for this topic. It's so great hearing your story. Um, I know that when we hear the other two, it's just gonna compound um, how important this is. So I'm gonna go now to Paloma and we can hear from her next. Hi everyone, I'm Paloma and I'm here to share about my experience using GVOG, glucagon injection. I think it's important to share because I think it'll completely change the way that you think about glucagon. But before I talk about GVOG, I want to talk about myself. <laughs> so I live in sunny Arizona. And actually right now I'm on vacation in Mexico with my family, but I didn't want to miss being here with you guys tonight. But since I love Arizona so much, I like to call myself the unofficial Miss Arizona, because I just love everything about it. You can always find me 
paddleboarding, hiking, kayaking, brunching, you know, all the Arizona things. But before I was diagnosed with type one, I was just living a super carefree life. I wasn't really thinking about my health. And I actually didn't even have health insurance at the time because I didn't think I would ever need it. But I wish I could see you guys right now because I'm sure that you would be nodding along with me uh, when I tell you about my symptoms. So I started feeling, you know, super tired. I started drinking a ton of water. I was always having to run to the restroom. And I made an appointment with my doctor and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And in that moment for me, and I'm sure you can relate, my whole world changed in the instant. It's scary to be diagnosed with diabetes or really any chronic illness. And I was so scared in the beginning of literally everything. I was scared of going too high. I was scared of going low. I was scared of um, the needles. I was scared just of how other people were going to look at me, you know, if they were going to think of me differently. But not only was I feeling scared, but I felt so alone. And it's like kind of silly to say that I felt like I was the only person on this planet living with diabetes, even though there's millions of people out there like yourself um, living with the condition. But I felt so alone until I created um, my social media page, Glitter Glucose, and then I was able to connect with people all over the world, maybe some of you watching right now, um, through social media. And through that is how I actually found out about GVOG. I um, feel like I've learned so many things that's so much of like what I know about diabetes today through social media. But before I had heard about GVOG, I knew a little bit about glucagon. I knew I should probably have one, but um, I never thought of it as essential, like I think the way I think about my insulin or my CGM. And at this point, I had been living with diabetes for seven years and never had to use um, glucagon. But when I heard about GVOC and like how easy it was and how it's two steps and really step one is taking the lid off <laughs> so I'm like it's so easy to use um you know step one take off the lid and then uh, I used the pre-filled syringe when I had to use it and insert I inserted it into my leg um I felt confident because with the old red um box I never opened it I never learned how to use it and I never felt like someone else in my family or friends or a stranger if there was an emergency somewhere would know how to use it but with cheap folks since it's so simple I was like I could figure out how to use this my family could figure out how to use this so I wanted one so um I talked to my doctor about it and he was totally on board and he wrote me a prescription, but um, obviously, you know, there's important safety information that comes with using um, any prescription. So you'll want to talk to your doctor about that. And there is a link provided in the chat for um, important safety information and Charlie also shared it earlier but great I had my prescription I got my GVOC and I just had it with me but I thought I'm never gonna need to use this but I did so I 
went on a road trip with a friend and we had a great time. We were away for the weekend. But when I came back home, I checked my blood sugar and I was 170. Um, you know, 170. I wasn't scared of going low. I felt comfortable. I thought, you know, I, I'm good. I'm fine. But shortly after I started feeling like really shaky, my heart was beating fast and it was a familiar feeling. And I thought, no way that I'm low. It can't be that I'm low. I was just 170, but I checked anyway, and I was 50 something. So I grabbed my gummy bears, but then I felt something that I had never felt before. I felt like I was about to pass out any moment. And before I went on the trip, I had showed my friend my g -Vogue and said, you know, this is in case of a severe low blood sugar. It's only for emergencies. We probably won't use it, but just so you know, here it is. So when I was feeling this moment of panic, like I'm about to pass out, I told my friend, get g -Vogue. And he was like, whoa, oh my gosh, okay. And he went and grabbed it. He gave it to me. I like ripped up in the package, took off the lid and put the pre-filled syringe into my leg. And my friend was <laughs> freaking out because he knew it was like a serious thing, but I felt like a sense of relief because I actually had a real tool that came in handy during this scary situation. I, and you know, after I used it, I was kind of waiting for side effects to appear because I had heard other people talk about using glucagon and they felt nauseous or they vomited, but I didn't experience any of those symptoms at that time. And um, my blood sugar didn't just like instantly spike up, but it steadily rose. And um, I actually ended up just going to sleep, but traditionally during a low, and don't tell me I'm the only one, I would just normally like binge everything in front of me and just, you know, it, you just keep eating or drinking juice. And then I end up in this whole roller coaster of blood sugars for like, even into the next day. But like I said, when I used g -Voke, I felt this sense of relief because I had a real tool instead of just gummy bears and some juice. So of course, this is my experience. You can speak with your healthcare provider um, about your situation, but fast forward to a week later, I went on another road trip with the same friend and I had my bags packed. I had everything I needed except g -Vogue because I had just used it the week before and I hadn't requested a, a new prescription. But honestly, I thought, you know, g -Vogue, glucagon is just for emergencies. Like emergencies are rare. I'm not gonna need it. So we get to the hotel and my friend actually ended up waking up in the middle of the night and so I decided he woke me up and I thought I'll just check my blood sugar why not and I saw it was 40 so I panicked because I knew I didn't have my g-boke and I knew I, I didn't have any sugar because I had already ate it on the way on the drive there so I told my friend, go to the vending machine, get me what I need. And he like ran down and put his money in the vending machine. And of course it ate his money. So he ran to the front desk and was like, I, I, I this is an emergency. Like I need something. Um, and they gave him more money and he put it in and it ate his money 
again. So my friend is like freaking out because he knows that this, like, this is, you know, the clock is ticking. So my friend, mind you, he's built like a football player. He's 6'5", almost 300 pounds. He punched through the vending machine and got me what I needed, ran back upstairs. And it was just this whole like scary situation. He, um, thankfully the hotel staff was understanding of the situation. But for me and for my friend, you know, this would have been a situation where g could have avoided all of this, it's, you know, especially the broken glass situation. But after these experiences, I, you will not find me <laughs> without my g -Vogue. If I'm on a hike, I have g with me. If I'm you know, shopping, I have G-Vogue with me. If I'm on a trip, like it's with me. If you see me, you see G-Vogue because, you know, emergencies, you know, you don't know when they're going to happen, but at least you can be prepared for them when they do occur. So as people with diabetes, you know, we consult with our doctors and our endos about things, but really day to day, hour to hour, even minute to minute, we're the ones literally calling the shots. And, you know, we need to have the tools so we don't feel afraid and we feel confident. And ever since these two situations that I had, I, I see GVO and glucagon as essential to my diabetes management as my insulin and my CGM. So, you know, now I'm eight years into my diabetes journey and, you know, so much has changed, but the greatest change really for me is that living with diabetes is not scary anymore. It's just part of my life. And I feel confident managing it, especially having all the right tools that I need for my management. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there is important safety information that you must know about um, using this prescription. And it is in the chat for you to check out for yourself. And also Charlie did mention it earlier, but um, after listening to my story of needing g twice in one week, I hope you realize how important it is to have g if on hand, if you're on insulin, talk to your doctor about it, let them know how important it is for you. And also you can actually take the first step by going to um, g glucagon.com and requesting a prescription there, it, you know, take it from me, it really is that important. You can do it right now if you want. Awesome, Paloma. So great. I mean, the, the, the vending machine story, <laughs> I've heard it many times because we talk a lot and it still is so surprising. And it's so crazy that in within a seven day period, you, you needed it. And it just proves that you never know when it's going to happen and it happened at any time. So the fact that, you know, you had to, your friend had to break through glass, <laughs> you know, we can, we can get you, if you have GBO, it doesn't have to be a break glass moment. And in your case, that's true. Like literally. It's literal. <laughs> yes. So I don't think I'm doing that again. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Um, we have one more story to share. I don't think Kenny has a break glass. <laughs> machine story but I know his story is still very very important and I'm so happy you can share it with us as well go ahead thanks Layla um as Layla said my name is Kenny Rodenheiser I have had type 1 diabetes since I was 12 years old um first and foremost just want to thank Zeros Pharmaceuticals for having me here today um to be able to share my experience with GVOC with you so actually the first little bit that I want to tell, talk to you about is not about GVOC 
Um, it's actually when I was a teenager and I was given glucagon for the first time. Um, but, you know, we'll get to that in a little bit. Following Paloma's suit, let me talk about me first. Um, I was diagnosed at 12 years old. Early on, I was super stubborn. So I was put on that regimen where I needed to have, you know, a snack at this time, at this many carbs, and I couldn't eat for another 45 minutes. And I was a huge punk. So when it was time for me to eat, I wouldn't want to eat. When it was time for me not to eat, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go for the kitchen now. Um, really just not taking care of myself and not taking control of my diabetes. The first time I attended actually the Friends for Life conference was the first time that I met other kids with diabetes. And it just like opened my world up. So we went out to a restaurant and every single person out on the table was taking out their test kit to be able to check their blood sugar. When the food came, everyone was taking insulin. And I thought, I'm not different. Everybody else here is just like me. And there was a spark inside that just changed my life. And I'm like, wow, now I really got to take care of my diabetes. Flash forward two years, I actually returned to the Friends for Life conference. Um, that weekend, I was just like super active. And one night we were playing basketball. And the following morning, it was breakfast time. And I gave myself insulin. I think I miscounted carbs or just was distracted by whatever I was doing because I'm easily distracted. And I was walking and actually had a hypoglycemic seizure there on site. Because it was a Friends for Life conference, there was a mom who actually was walking by with glucagon in her purse. And she was afraid to use it. And I just, I keep thinking to this day, you know, she was afraid to use that um, glucagon. Fortunately for me, there was also a diabetes educator who had been to be walking around and all signs and everything came together and I was given that glucagon. And the rest of the day, I just spent the day recovering my room, felt miserable, um, missed like going to Magic Kingdom that day. It was awful, awful, awful. But again, when I look back, I think about that mother who just was uncomfortable using her glucagon. And if you have this medication that's designed to bring your blood sugar up and you're afraid to use it, what's the point? The diabetes educators aren't going to be there every single day. Not every single day is the Friends for Life conference. So the likelihood of having someone to be a diabetes educator to be able to give that to you is, let's just say, severely low. Um, flash forward to today. I live in New Jersey with my wife and now almost nine-month-old daughter. Oh, she's grown so fast. Um, I professionally, I became a diabetes care and education specialist. Thank you for correcting that, Layla. They changed our name. I don't know why. Um, and I'm also a registered nurse. But personally, I love to run. I love to be active. If I can toot my horn for just one second since I'm on the internet and nobody can stop me, um, I want to talk about two different run challenges that I've done. Just my love for being active. So the first one was called the Disney Dopey Challenge. And for those who don't know what that is, on Thursday, you run a 5K. On Friday, you run a 10K. On Saturday, you run a half marathon. And on Sunday, you run a full marathon. All those consecutively. And I mean, I was in much better shape then. I'm kind of getting out of breath now as I talk about it because I'm not in shape anymore. Um, the second challenge that I did was the Philadelphia Freedom Challenge, which was a half marathon on Saturday morning, an 8K on Saturday afternoon, and then a full marathon on Sunday morning. And there's no reason for me to tell you this other than to toot my own horn and talk to you about how much I love to be active. Um, in addition to that nonsense that I do, I also started learning that life is not all about blood sugars. And I don't have to beat myself up when my blood sugar isn't perfect anymore because highs and lows don't define who I am as a human. It's just that data point. There are so many different variables that come into managing diabetes and I used to think that I can control every one of them. Like I was this mad scientist behind the scene and I could control everything. But the truth is life happens and so many things are out of our control. You can prepare all you want, but there's no way to predict when and where something will happen. I think as you heard from the other two stories too. Um, I was really excited to hear about Gvoke because I believe that all patients deserve to have access to as many tools as possible to manage their diabetes. Gvoke is one of those tools. And when I learned about Gvoke, I talked to my doctor right away because I got excited. You don't have to mix it. It's ready to go. And as Paloma said, 
It's only two steps. So I used to think about glucagon as a last ditch effort, right? When I received that at 15 years old, it was that last ditch effort because I was actively having a seizure, but you can actually use it before a person passes out. And, you know, that's what I did to myself. So as with all prescription drugs, you've heard it from so many people. There are so many safety considerations and information. The links are there. Charlie went over the long list of things. I want to get to you about my story. So as I said before, life is constantly changing. Sometimes we're high, sometimes we're low, both in life as well as with blood sugars. And then this past October, I had the highest high of my life. My daughter was born and she made me a father and suddenly everything in the world mattered less. She was just the most important thing, the shining light to my life. Um, it's crazy that this tiny little human just controls literally everything that I do. But with a newborn, my diabetes management took a hit. So I anticipated a lack of sleep. I anticipated not eating healthily and having like this crazy amount of caffeine in my body at all times. I anticipated not being as active as I was before, but what I didn't anticipate was not being able to plan my meals. If we had 10 minutes to eat, there's no way that I was passing that up because I had to wait for a 15 minute pre bowl I had to take what I could get. That was the biggest factor for me in this past nine months, because in January of this past year, um, I actually used GVOC on myself. So that happened because after months and months, nearly a year of quarantining, my wife and I just went crazy. Um, her family was going up to Vermont and we decided to tag along. We all got like this cotton swab poking our brain, checked it, made sure that we're safe so we could stay socially, socially distant and keep ourselves safe. Um, and then for me, that trip was also serving as extra help with the baby so that I could reset my diabetes and make it a point to do better. So one morning we woke up, we were up in Vermont, just out of our sorts a little bit. Um, and we were planning on having this like super carby breakfast. And you all know the one that you have to give a little bit of extra insulin for because you're eating all those carbs. Um, so I made it a point to pre bolus. And then life happened and the dog was whining at the door. So I took the dog outside and then I came back in. My wife was getting ready and the baby was crying. So I jumped in and changed the diaper. And all of a sudden my CGM was telling me like, hey, your blood sugar's dropping. So I was like, okay, hand the wife off to my baby or hand, the, hand my wife off to the baby. Choose hand my baby off to my wife so that she can start feeding. And then I went out and got a juice. And then a couple minutes later, it beeped again and showed that my blood sugar was plummeting. And it was in that moment that I was like, oh my gosh, I gave myself so much insulin for that breakfast, got distracted, as I said, and just didn't eat it. I didn't eat anything. So the juice that I had before didn't work at all. I actually did a finger stick and I was lower than anticipated and panic just started to set in. So I went back out to grab more food and all of a sudden I had the same symptoms that I had went back when I was 15 years old. The shakiness was bad, but also my tell was that my vision was getting super blurry and I started to think that I was going to pass out. So bringing the juice back to the room that my wife and I were staying in, she's still feeding the baby at this point. I started thinking like, I, I don't know what to do. Um, so I got my Jivo Kypopen pouch out, put it on the table. And I said, I think I might pass out. If I do, please give this to me. Um, which at that point in my head, in my low stupor, I was also debating like, you know, if I'm debating or if I'm telling her, if I'm about to pass out, give this to me, I need to do this to myself. She's taking care of our baby. She is not able to jump up and go into action because she has a human on her. Um, so I need to take actions in my own hand. So, you know, I grabbed the auto, auto injector, removed the cap, injected it right into my abdomen. Didn't have to mix anything together. I just gave it. It was ready to go. Gvoke was ready to go. After giving it, I laid back down and just waited. You know, I just wanted to decompress with everything. Um, and after a while, my blood sugar started to come back up. 
and on my CGM, watching those numbers climb, I just, I felt safe. I felt secure. I knew the medication was working. I knew that I was going to be okay. Um, fortunately for me, I was prepared. I had my pouch and I was ready for that unexpected. I had my g with me. I did feel nauseous afterwards, which is one of the really common side effects of g -Voc. Um, Hold on. And comparing to 15 years ago where I was down and out for the down for the count and out for the day, I actually bounced back and later that night I was able to hang out with everybody. So it was really a, a different experience for me. Um, nausea is a common side effect of glucagon, including g -Vox, all glucagon. But of course, this is my experience and every patient is different. So make sure you talk with your team, make sure you talk with your healthcare providers for any questions that you have. My typical treatment for any lows is a juice box or a gummy bear or like any kind of candy that's fast acting that'll bring my blood sugar up really quickly. But as I said, this low is different. I brought all this other food back in and I didn't think that I was gonna be able to out eat my way from this low knowing that I gave myself all that insulin, I needed something that was gonna bring my blood sugar up. I needed a medication that was gonna bring my blood sugar up. And I was just so happy that I had GVOC with me. All lows can be scary, but severe lows can be extra scary. And it's us, up, up to us as people with diabetes to be prepared for these scenarios. So we can reduce the anxiety. We can make sure that we're not afraid of low blood sugars as much by being prepared and carrying glucagon. This whole Vermont experience for me was a huge wake-up call. First, I realized that, you know, we don't have to give glucagon once we're passed out. I didn't have to tell my wife, like, wait until I have a seizure and then start treating me. You know, we could be proactive. And I also realized that people need to know where GVOC is at all times. Um, if I didn't grab that out of my bag before I gave it or before my anything happened, if I had a seizure before I grabbed it out of my bag, my wife would have had no idea where it was. And in addition to having a child on her, she would not have been able to treat me as readily as I, when I put it there. Even more so, I was able to give it to myself. So we did have a conversation after that. Now we know where it is in all of my bags. We know that I carry it with me at all times because you can't plan for the unexpected. As I said before, you just, you don't know what's going to happen. So life is hectic. Everybody's hectic. For me, you know, we work, have kids. I still don't sleep very consistently at night, but now I know that I can't lose sight of my diabetes management. I can't lose sight of my health because if I'm not taking care of myself, I can't be there for my daughter. And that again, is the most important thing to me. So by being prepared for lows, I know that I'm going to be able to take care of any situation that comes. I have that confidence because I carry GVOC with me. Wherever I go, my wife knows where to find it and how to use it. And she's comfortable too because of those two easy steps. <coughs> um, I compare glucagon a lot to a fire extinguisher. So you want to have a fire extinguisher just like how you want to have GVOC, both of which you hope to never use in your entire life. Also, both of which are probably going to expire before you use it. So GVOC, the expiration is two years after the date of manufacture. Um, so you should get a new one, just like your fire extinguisher. But you should always have both on hand because you never know when these situations are going to happen, are going to arise. Um, so I hope after listening to me, and Paloma and Charlie and everybody that you consider needing glucagon and carrying glucagon with you and realizing just how important it is to have GVOC on hand, especially if you're on insulin. The reality is you have a medication insulin that brings your blood sugar down. So you need to have a medication that brings your blood sugar up in case of an emergency. You can't just rely on food every single time. So make sure you talk with your doctor, make sure you have a conversation about GVOC as soon as you can. And it's your health. Make sure you advocate for yourself. If you don't feel comfortable talking to your doctor directly, the website's in the chat so you can go there um, and request the prescription and get it started because lows are scary and need to be taken seriously. So please don't wait. Make sure you get GVOC today. Once again, 
Kenny, thank you so much. It's so interesting with everybody's story is that they're all so different, yet it's so common in the fact that a severe low can happen at any time. So the fact of the matter is, is that everybody watching, whether it's live or on replay, you have your own stories. It's not just these three people. So you all have a story about going low in a severe situation. And it's because if you're taking insulin, the number one adverse reaction or the number one side effect is hypoglycemia. And per the ADA standards of care, if you're at risk of going below 54, you should be carrying glucagon. So if you're on insulin, you're at risk of going below 54. If I ask people in the audience, if you were live, if I said, you know, how often do you have a low blood sugar? You might not even think you have on any. Oh, how many in the last year? Probably not. But if I ask you if you've gone below 54, probably all of you would raise your hands. And so when the standards of care say you should have it, but we know for a fact that there's only 10% of people on insulin who actually have a glucagon prescription. So that means 90% of people are not prepared to handle a severe low blood sugar event with glucagon right now. So I have, I want to encourage you to get GVOC Hypopen into your hands as soon as possible. It has two simple steps and I'm going to go through quickly. I know we don't have much more time, but I'm going to show you. It comes in a box. And in this box, you actually have two hypo pens. So what's amazing, especially for someone like Paloma and her story, your prescription comes with a two pack automatically. So these both come in and you don't want to open them until you actually have to use them, but you get two, it comes in a two pack. But what I am going to do is going to demonstrate quickly on a trainer pen. So this is not real medication. This is a trainer pen, as you can see, but I'll show you those two simple administration steps that everybody was talking about. So you literally pull the cap off. You'll see that's a red, you know, pull the red cap off. You have a yellow, it's hard to see in my light, but there's a yellow tip here. You put it down onto your skin. You hold it down for five seconds and you see this little window, it'll turn red. So those are the two steps. So when you're in the middle you know, of an emergency, especially like Kenny was talking about, those two simple steps really help you, you know, take kind of control of the situation. So again, everybody has said it, but there's very important information in the chat for safety. And you know, you're all online right now watching this, whether you're, it's on replay or live, and you can actually go to GVOC Hypopen and request a prescription. And so we're gonna actually do that right now in my last few minutes here, because I wanna show you how easy it is to find the information that you need. So I'm gonna see if I can share my screen without messing everything up. But first, share my screen. Okay, I think everybody can see it. So if you go to gvoglucagon.com and if you click on how to get GVOC, there's two ways. First, you can go to your doctor, your normal doctor, ask for the prescription, take it to your local pharmacy. But we do know that there's a lot of people that that's not always easy, your appointments aren't easy to get to, et cetera. So you can actually request a prescription online through PillPack, which is an Amazon pharmacy. PillPack will contact your doctor. So this is not a stranger, this is not someone in the internet, but it, they will contact your doctor re to request that prescription be approved. And then they package it up and they send it to your home. So this is where you'll find that on, um, on our website. And then the other thing that happens is that we also have savings and support, which is a $0 copay right now if you're on commercial insurance and it's for a limited time. So right now, if you're commercially eligible, you could pay $0 for your GVOC prescription, which again, comes in a two pack. And with pill pack, they automatically apply that if you're eligible, but you can also go to the website that I'm showing you on screen and you can bring that to your doctor if you're gonna go into the office. So I have two other pieces of information that 
might be good, but if you like Paloma or Kenny, if you've actually ever used Gvoke, we would love for you to potentially share your story like Charlie, Paloma and Kenny. So we have an email address that Carrie's gonna put in also into the chat that if anybody who's watching either live or on replay and you have used Gvoke and want to share your story with us, we have an email for that, which is my GVOC story at the pxgroup.com. So I want to leave the final, final message with you, and then we'll take a few questions in our five minutes. Um, but I can't express how important it is to give you um, another tool in your toolbox for managing your diabetes overall. As Paloma said, you know, with your insulin, with your CGM. Um, GVOC should be that critical tool that you have in your whole bag that you that you use. And with a two pack, you can keep it in multiple places. So really try and get your GVOC hypo pen today. So then we do have a few minutes. Please um, let me know if you have any questions either in the Q&A or in the chat. And we can um, go over a couple of those things that we, we actually have some common questions. First, um, I think Kenny mentioned it, that GVOC, um, the shelf life for GVOC is um, two years from the date of manufacture on the box. Um, I do want to address the question that came in from Carrie just now about insurance. So obviously every state and every program has different insurance offerings. So right now, nationally, there's really good coverage with eight out of 10 lives being covered. So if you, for example, tried to get GVO when it first came out and there wasn't, it wasn't approved your insurance, you should ask your doctor to go back and try it again because the coverage is much more, it's a much more significant coverage now. So eight out of 10 people nationally um, are covered for GVO. So definitely try that. Um, I think, again, our panelists really talked about um, the fact that you don't need to pass out with, um, and to, to self-administer. It's critical that the people around you know where your GVOC is so that they can administer if there's a seizure passing out. But that's what's so great is that our tool being two steps, it is something that you can still do to yourself even when um, you don't have 11 steps of reconstitution as we've had in the past. Um, and then the other thing about the product is that it's um, that two year shelf life stability from data manufacture is actually no refrigeration required. So I think that's also a common question that comes up a lot. Um, so hopefully I covered that, but there's two more minutes in case anyone has questions for our speakers. I did see Melissa wanted Kenny to go on a, a bike ride to. <laughs> yeah, tour de course cure sounds awesome. Um, I don't know what area in the country you are, but I am not nearly trained for that right now, but it's a good goal. Um, one other question just came in about does GVOC sting going in? Um, even though there is no visible needle, it is still a needle. So it's probably going to vary based on people, um, on whether, you know, there's a lot of pain or not, but um, there is no visible needle, but it is an injection. I just want to be clear that it is an injection. It's an auto injector, but it is an injection. All right. I think that's it for now. So we'll hand it back to Carrie for the final closeout. I can't thank everybody enough for sharing all your great stories. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Hi, everybody. I've been hiding here the whole time. So <laughs> thank you for being here. And Layla and Kenny and Charlie and Paloma, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know this was a really valuable discussion for the CWD community. And so I'm glad you guys spent some time with us on a Sunday night to hang out with all of us. So thanks for doing that. Um, I hope everybody at home had a good time. We're going to have a good time. I hope it was a party for you at home. Um, we're going to be replaying this uh, video 
sorry, my blood sugar is slightly elevated and now you all know. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have this video archived and posted on the Children with Diabetes website probably tonight or tomorrow morning. So we'll be sharing that through our social media channels. So if you came in late or you are watching this at home and you wish you caught it live, we're here for you. We'll have the archived footage for you to review and you can send any questions along that you have um, for the Zeris team through us and we're happy to forward those for you. But thank you all for, for joining us tonight and for our friends at home. So we're gonna take a little break from the screen side chats for the month of July, because I'm not sure if you heard, but Friends for Life is back in person in Orlando. And our team is kind of bananas with preparing and getting ready for that event. So there won't be any new screen side chats for July, but in August, we'll be picking things back up. August 1st, we'll have our first chat of the fall or late summer season taking place. So visit with us then for that. You can get more information about those chats at cwd.is backslash, backslash screenside. But in the interim, have a nice month of July. Have fun at Friends for Life Orlando if you're able to get down there. And for everybody who joined us tonight, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care.